a never before seen side effect is threatening the life of astronauts in space. But how come NASA didn't spot it before? And what will be the true cost of their mistake? In today's video, we'll look at the consequences it holds for space exploration and the shadow it casts to space colonization plans. As earthbound research studies on human health are often focused on disease rather than baseline conditions, space has become a prime location for medical research. The harsh and extreme conditions of the cosmos make it the perfect environment to carry out for loads of different experiments on the human body. In fact, the extreme changes astronauts suffer during their trip are beneficial to us all as the microgravity environment of space already helps science to learn a lot more about aging, the formation of cancer, and even recovery abilities of the human body besides many more. As a matter of fact, the International Space Station is the perfect place to witness these changes and carry out different researches we cannot do here on Earth. Hence, around 200 scientific experiments are going on right now on ISS. So basically, when it comes to medical research, you can think of the station like a big lab that speeds up time where astronauts are the mice. We already know that space travel takes a huge physical toll on the human body. As mankind continues to plan longer and more distant missions beyond Earth, understanding how space impacts health is imperative to both safe and successful journeys. Previous experiments showed that leaving Earth can cause serious problems for humans, as soon as they are not that much affected by the gravity of the planet. Previous results prove that astronauts lose 3 million red blood cells in space every second. The scary part of the finding is that this is 54% more than they would do on Earth. This condition is known as space anemia, and astronauts should be treated like they would if suffered a serious injury. It was previously thought that this anemia was only temporary, signaled by a 10 to 12% decrease in red blood cell count during an astronaut's first 10 days in space when the body fluids shifted to adjust. But the study reveals that this process doesn't stop in space but that the anemia actually continues for the next six months. However, these are not the only problems space agencies have to deal with. It is widely known that astronauts lose up to 10% of their body weight. I think it's that food doesn't settle the same way it does on Earth, so that the stretching of your stomach, which sends the signals to your brain to say, you're full, stop eating, I think that gets triggered faster in weightlessness than it does on Earth, Dr. Scott Smith says. To fight the phenomenon, astronauts are commanded to eat by an application whenever data shows lack of calories for the day. Yet, however, some of them still lose a lot of weight up there, and the explanation of the happening is not yet fully formed. Besides the newest and most terrifying results which we are about to reveal, NASA's twin study showed us just how detrimental space travel can be to the human body. The wide-ranging research, which lasted between 2015 and 2016, compared the biological difference of astronaut Scott Kelly to that of his twin brother, Mark. Based on the results, it can be stated that Scott's DNA was changed for good during his one-year mission. His telomeres stretched in space, becoming temporarily younger than his twin, but collapsed dramatically after the return to Earth. The opposite was detected when it comes to cognitive efficiency, which dropped during the mission and returned to optimum later. But apparently, there's a more dangerous side effect that the previous studies have neglected, and that's the issue of bone loss that results from spending time in space. And we're not talking about an extended period of time. A recent study published in the Journal of Scientific Reports shows that spending a few months in space will make astronauts lose the same bone density as they would lose over a couple of decades on Earth. Based on the gathered data, the exact number estimate 20 years of bone loss in six months. This result is much worse than what a previous study calculated back in 2007, and nobody knows why. In this particular paper, researchers of the field estimated a 2 to 9% loss in bone mass for a 9-month space trip, which is way less than what the newest data suggests. The scariest part is that the most affected astronauts struggle to recover even after a year of their space trip. This can cause quite a lot of health problems for humans, ranging from bone fractures to back pain and loss of height. Additionally, it depletes a person's skeletal frame. It's actually not an unusual phenomenon 
But with the rate at which it happens in space, we might be forced to abandon our dreams of living on Mars and other planets. It will not be easy for the crew to set foot on Martian soil when they arrive. It's very disabling, Garkle and Koch noted in an interview. In reality, studies around this discussion have been conducted in the past, giving scientists a hint of what to expect. Once in 2020, a research work simulated the effects of what a three-year journey to Mars can do to the human body. Scientists found that astronauts who undertake this trip have a 33% chance of suffering from osteoporosis, obviously caused by the weightlessness of the environment. Despite the fact that astronauts are moving around constantly, the weightlessness of space removes pressure from the legs when standing or walking, making the same effect as if the crew were extremely inactive. Even with two hours of sport a day, it is like you are bedridden for the other 22 hours. Told by Guillermet Garklin Koch, the head of the medical research at France's CNES Space Agency. NASA and other space agencies had hoped that the introduction of frequent exercise in the daily routine of astronauts in space would solve the problems, but it didn't. In fact, another study was carried out to determine the recovery rate of 17 astronauts who had lost bone mass during their time on the International Space Station. They found that approximately 53% of the astronauts were yet to recoup the lost bone mass one year after they returned to our Earth. The more time astronauts spend aboard the ISS, the slower their recovery speed. And that's perhaps the biggest worry for planet-hunting astronomers, especially because there's no solution to the problem yet. Will it continue to get worse over time or not? We don't know, said Stephen Boyd, director of the McCraig Institute for Bone and Joint Health. It's possible we hit a steady state after a while, or it's possible that we continue to lose bone. But I can't imagine that we continue to lose it until there's nothing left. Whether scientists are right or wrong, one thing is certain. If we are to colonise Mars or any other planet in the near future, picking out the best candidates for the mission is more than crucial. Taking not just psychology, education, personality traits and cooperation skills, among many more, into account, but also physical parameter is vital. As per the data collected by the study, those astronauts who were extremely fit in their 40s are not that much affected by bone loss. And this points out Chris Hadfield's words stating that the upcoming Mars astronauts must be superhumans. Yet, however, if scientists cannot come up with a solution to prevent this from happening, our dreams of becoming a planet-faring species might fade. Taking the fact into account that only the trip to the Red Planet will take seven months, not to talk about the way back, this phenomenon is a serious problem for the mission. But for now, the International Space Station is the perfect place to research, test, examine and solve the problem for good.